If you ask me if I believe the Bible, I will always say yes. With that said, this big fish understands that parts of the Bible are hard to swallow, literally. I've swallowed some really big fish in my time, but no big fish has ever swallowed me. The Holy Bible says that Jonah was swallowed by a big fish. Some may say it was a whale that swallowed Jonah because it's the only fish that's large enough to swallow a man. Some may say it's not a whale because a whale's a mammal and so it's technically not a fish. Some may say that Jonah was swallowed by his guilt, not by a fish at all. And some may say there was no Jonah at all. Most people, though, agree that there was a Nineveh. And because the book of Jonah says that Nineveh was an exceedingly great city of three days journey, the internet site Wikipedia extrapolates that Nineveh was therefore 62 miles in circumference. Do I believe that? Sure, why not? 20 years ago, when I was 20 years younger, I was strictly a literal interpreter of the Bible. If the Bible said that Jonah was swallowed by a fish, to me the only question was, what kind of fish? Now, the wiser I get, the less I really seem to know. The fact is that I want to believe that this story did in fact involve a big fish that swallowed Jonah and kept him in his belly for three days. I don't want this story to be nothing more than coloring book pages. I've heard it said that life is a journey, not a destination. I think that some of the books of the Bible are destinations rather than journeys. How it is said is less important than what is said. And big fish, big boats, and stormy seas aside, this story is about God's mercy and his concern for the people of Nineveh. He gave them every opportunity to change, and they did change. And God spared them. Was Jonah happy that his message took root and the people showed their reverence for God? No. He was angry because he was embarrassed that his prophecy didn't come true. Just as Jonah feared, God got soft on him and forgave and spared the Ninevites. The destination of this story is the contrast of the love and mercy of God and the selfish core of Jonah. The journey of this story is whether it is literal or or literary. In his time on earth, Jesus told many a truth by telling stories that weren't true. They were parables, parallel words. Jesus' story ran on one rail while the truth about God's kingdom ran on the rail right beside it. Jesus may be telling his disciples about workers in the vineyard, but he's really talking about the equity of rewards in heaven. It was just another way that God's grace and mercy was brought to earth and explained so that all could understand. Again, God's love is the destination. The parables just kept the journey on track. Before Jesus' journey to the earth, how did the people know of God's mercy, his grace, and his justice? Were the amazing stories of the Old Testament historic fact or divine parables? Did Methuselah really live to be 975 years old? Was there a real Noah and did he really build an ark? Did Moses really part the Red Sea? I would suggest to you that those points are insignificant arguments, especially with those who would use them to try to discredit your faith. As for the story of Jonah and the big fish, I can tell you because of what a little bird told me that this story is actual and true. One Sunday morning, about 15 years ago, at the church beach trip at Spring Maid Beach, 
I was on the beach while everyone else was still asleep. There were many birds tending to their morning hunting chores, but one stopped and it looked at me and it began speaking. I am a seagull. My street is this beach. My wings have no limit. The moon is my reach. On mornings like this, I normally dive and sample the fare of last evening's tide. Some of my flock follow boats from the dock and feed on chum overthrown. But I am a seagull, a hunter. I'll find my own. I'm usually quite busy, but sometimes I can't resist playing with the clam or the fish that my fashionable beak will so skillfully earn. I am a seagull. Some call me a cuckoo. I prefer turn. I sometimes feel I must escape the flock. The noise can be deafening and sometimes the rocks of the cliff are so crowded I worry that I'll forget which bird is me. I am a seagull, one of many. So often I'll slip into the quiet night and perhaps catch a ride on a log or a boat oar long lost in the tide. Past crashing wave and hungry crowd, it is still and I can rest and consider in luxury my next day's sail. But the night such as these that I remember the best was the night I heard God's name praised from inside a whale. The voice came from Jonah, a prophet, a very good man who at times found himself at God's left hand. He was commissioned by God and he wouldn't go just like Moses and a few other birds that I know. He was running from God. The fish found him and gave him a ride. Jonah started praying while he was still inside. The water came over me and choked me. But you, O oh Lord my God, brought me back from the depths alive. For three days I listened. I did not fly or eat or swim. I knew it may be a long time before I saw this again. So I watched the whole spectacle until the third day when the fish spat him out and then swam away. Jonah, whale weary, beached. His last three days were vicious. He was covered in seaweed and slime. Delicious. I am a seagull. I digress. I confess I knew little of Jonah's Lord, but having heard three days' praises, I had to know more. Because all I knew of him then was punishment, submission, obedience, sin. A master to fear, the Lord of scorn, all too quick with a fire or an earthquake or a storm, eager to throw sinners into earth's fiery core. I was wrong. I'm a seagull. I've been wrong before. Jonah having his way would have destroyed a whole city. But it was God Almighty who chose to show pity. And while Jonah's concern was chiefly his pride, God thought of those who would have certainly died. And even today, he reigns from above. And he guides us with mercy. And he corrects us with love. And we need not be perfect to receive this great gift. We only need be. So now I try. I try to fly high, fly higher. High enough to reach my Lord to praise Him. But when sweet earth's breath no longer supports my wings. I do not worry. I will not fall. The King of kings, the Lord of all comes down to me. And I sail safe within his outstretched arms. I return to the flock, still full from his love, looking slightly back and very much above, and I do not worry that God will forget which bird is me. He loves me, though I am a seagull. <laughs>